Okay, more on the center of mass, 6.6. .6. Let's do a little example or a problem, <coughs> an example. I've been doing this in the ADU classes, so um, some of you might be familiar with it. Um, okay, so it says determine the position <coughs> of the center of mass of the baton shown in the figure, taking the origin of your coordinate axis, three different origins, okay? The center of the larger ball, the center of the smaller ball, and uh, a point one meter to the left, okay? Now, we know that the position of the center of mass is given by this equation. It is x, the position, uh, it's m1, x1. And remember, I want to put a bar over that so that we know that this can be positive or negative. It's got a, it's got a direction. m2, x2. How many um, in pieces of, or how many in pieces are there? How many objects in the system really? One, two, three. Okay, so we're going to have M3, X3. And it's all over M1 plus M2 plus M3. And we're taking it, here is our reference frame at the beginning, okay? So what is, if this is our zero point, what is the uh, position of this first mass? It is zero, so it's going to be point 0.2, that's the inertia, times zero, okay? Plus, now this is, uh, this is interesting. This is not a concentrated piece of mass, like, like these, okay? It is a slender bar, but the way that you do it is you find the center of mass of this object which we know will be, because it is uniform, we assume it's a uniform distribution. The center of mass for this second piece will be right in the center. Okay, so that'll be 0.5. So we've got now the inertia of the second one times 0.5 meters plus the inertia of the third one, which is 0.1 times 1. Times 1, and we have to divide by 0.2 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, so that is 0.4, and we should get 0.38 meters. So measured from this point here, let me erase that. Measured from this point, we've got the center of mass is 0.38. So it is somewhere here for the entire system. Okay, and that makes sense, right? Because if this, if this uh, piece was 0.1, that is the same as this one, then it would be right in the center. But because more mass, there's more inertia uh, towards this side, we know that the center of mass can't be at the center. It has to be over here. So now, if you would go and um, take a rope and, and try to pull this this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, this baton, it is a baton. If you want to try to pull this baton up and you tie a rope around there, it will balance. It's not going to tip. However, if you take, the, if you take a rope and tie it over there and try to lift up this thing, it's going to fall like that. It's going to rotate like that. Okay. Now, um, if you, this is important. If you now take your reference frame there, okay, so let's, uh, let's call this A, X center of mass B, okay, now what's going to happen? You're going to have this one, 0.2, but now take note, it is now to the left, so it has to be minus 1, minus 1, plus 0.1, this is 0.1 kilograms times minus 0.5, minus 0.5, plus 0.1 times 0, okay, because it, this, this position is 0, divided by 0.4. So in this case, you need to get, you need, you're going to get to the same 
position as you were before, but if you measure it from this side, it has to be now 1 minus 0.38, which I might make a mistake here, but it's minus 0.62 meters, minus 0.62 meters measured from this reference frame. And I'm not going to do it for this one, but if you do X center of mass for C, then it would be 1 meter plus 1.38, uh, so it'll be 1.38 meters. So uh, what we learn from here is that the center of mass is the same, but it changes based on your reference frame. Okay, cheers.